tonight's event, a celebration of German and Austrian authors and landscape, came about a year ago through a partnership idea with the Goethe Institute and conversations with their wonderful curator, Jutta Brendemuhl, who is here in the audience tonight. Jutta and I have been discussing this for a long time. And that partnership only became stronger with the support of a conference of, on women in German. It is a novel about an Austrian scientist who, among other thing, things, wants to get rid of his wife, wants to get rid of his life, and fantasizes about moving to Canada. <laughs> All my first uh, memories were about mountains because I grew up in the middle of the Alps, in a very small place. One of the memories I'm fond of is uh, when, the, when this very small village, village was closed off from the rest of the world because of avalanches in the 60s and 70s, when there were winters with lots of snow. Uh, nobody could come into the village for up to sometimes one week or 10 days and nobody could get out of it. And that was uh, a good thing for the imagination, to think this very small place is the whole world. Made it uh, very cozy uh, for a child. And of course, later, uh, you better move on and you better don't think that this uh, very small place could be the whole world. Later it was, uh, or about inventing things and about probably inventing myself because there was just nothing. My very mm. first impressing experience was when I about 30 years old or maybe 28 and I visited my lover at that time who um, used to live close to the Bodensee, but in the Austrian Alps. And it was winter time, and I saw the Alps completely covered in snow. And I was so overwhelmed by the light and the whiteness and the white shape of um, different sorts of um, massifs and, and, and mountains up there that I fell in love with the mountains instead of my lover. Clemens Setz, Exegese. Er fragte den Berg, was wird übrig bleiben nach dem letzten Gnadengesuch der Menschheit an die Zeit? Fels, sagte der Berg, Granit und Kalkstein. He asked the mountain, is the risk of annihilation before morning at present high or low? High said the mountain, 2,196 meters. He asked the mountain, what about the vegetation? What of green in this grim, comfortless future? Mixed forest, said the mountain, periodic meadows, mosses, underbrush. We were both young scientists back then, doing our first international field work and we spent the summer weeks in the ice together, the heat and the cold welding and freezing us permanently together. I would not go as far as saying that this kind of work attracts a specific type of personality, but the isolation of the wilderness, the monotony of days spent without the conveniences or even just the distractions of the city would turn anyone into a special breed. To Tim, who would sometimes be alone in the mountains for weeks, and who usually wore an absurd white anorak with a giant red maple leaf and the word Canada on the back, as if to demonstrate his ultimate loyalty. This truism applied in double measure. Today, Germany and Canada are closer than ever, not just as trading partners, members of NATO, the G7 and the G20, but in their shared values open to the world, embracing diversity, combating global warming, taking down rather than putting up walls. On Prime Minister... <laughs> yes. 
On Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's visit to Germany in February, he called the country, quote, not only a close ally, but a true friend.